everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to cleaner, greener, better for you beauty, skincare, and beyond. I try products out for you and share my honest reviews so you know what to buy and more importantly, what not to buy. So today I am back with a roundup, kind of a battle, but this time it's not between one versus one. I'm testing and battling four different concealers against one another, which is best if you want to find out all the details. Stick around and let's get into it. So today I am testing the Ilia True Skin Serum Concealer, Erin's Faces, Radiant Firming Concealer, Clove and Hallow Conceal and Correct, and the Saint Cosmetics On The Go Perfecting Concealer. <sighs> all of them, all in this video, they're all doe foot concealers. I've tried so many concealers, but I'm just kind of grouping them together, and then we'll see which one's best, right? When I say best, I'm talking about best price, easiest application, longest lasting, best coverage, best brightening. I wanted to start with the Ilia True Skin Serum Concealer. I have this in the shade Yucca, and the price here is $30. There are 12 shades available here. Of application, so this is a silkier formula. It's not heavy, but it's not feather light, so you're getting some weight to it. I found this to work really nicely when applied to the inner corners, the outer corner, and then the top of the lid with a brush. It really kind of spread across across those areas easily and quickly. I would say overall this really woke up the eye and it very much so created an even canvas. It wasn't the most brightening of the bunch, but I think it did a good job with sort of that evening out and waking up the eyes. Compared to the other concealers that I'm talking about, this one wins in terms of application. It was just quick, it was easy, the brush did what it needed to do. And I didn't have to fuss with it, it just kind of like worked. Something else to note is this works really well across the face, so it's a multitasker. Next up, finish and coverage, how did it do? I would say this is more on the medium side. I did find it easy to build, so you can kind of beef that coverage up if you want to. It's not going to look the most natural if you do that, unless you really kind of judge with a sponge and you really get into the application. For me, what I'm always looking for is something quick and easy and effective. While it wasn't necessarily shiny, shiny, there was a little bit of shine and I like to mute that, so to me that doesn't really look so great. I did set this and I wanted to set it. It's not one of those where I could go, huh, I don't need to set it. I felt like on my my skin I needed to set it. I have combination skin. I don't have necessarily oily lids, so if you do, then you will want to set this. Is it a crease-free formula? I found it to crease a little bit. It kind of does that thing where it just creates this even film. It doesn't feel like a film, but that's the best way I can kind of describe it. Still, it's not that feather lightweight formula, so there was a little bit of creasing. It wasn't terrible, it wasn't runny, it wasn't liquidy, but I did see creasing and working with that setting powder, very, very light dusting, it did the trick. Now, does it last? This is the last question for all of them. This was the best in terms of staying power for me. It looked very even on the skin. It didn't fade out completely, so I could still see the coverage, and it was smooth. This really held up well. All right, next we're gonna talk about the Erin's Faces Concealer. This is in a glass container. This concealer is $29.50. There are only five shades available. It's a smaller company, so keep that in mind. It's the lowest number of shades out of all of them. It is also the most eco-friendly out of all of the options in the sense that it has a glass container which is infinitely recyclable. A lot of these, so Ilya has a recycling program, there's also TerraCycle which is an incredible option. Okay, in terms of application, this is a lightweight and creamy formula, however, the doe foot just doesn't seem to want to pick up a lot of the product. So it goes on a bit dry. It wasn't the worst, but it wasn't like the greatest experience. However, if you don't really like putting on a lot of concealer, then you might like something like that. I pressed it in with my finger, I found that to work best. It took a little bit longer, but that's the method. I didn't use a brush because the brush would have lifted too much product. I very rarely personally use a sponge. It's more natural in finish and coverage, so if that's something you're looking for, no makeup makeup look, then this could be kind of something that you would enjoy. There was a little bit of brightening. I think a part of that has to do with the shade that I bought. It was Magnolia. It's a little bit lighter than what I normally get. It did get a nice pop of brightening. It didn't look too high contrast. It still looked natural. In terms of coverage throughout the day, at first when I applied it, it was okay, but I saw that it started to look a little feathery, had a little bit of texture throughout the day, a little bit of gathering, so I wasn't really happy with the way that it performed throughout the day. I did not see creasing, and I didn't need to set it. 
because it was so lightweight. Overall, staying power, lasting power, end of the day, it really didn't perform that well. It's separated by the end of the day. I was sort of surprised. I've tried it a couple times because it's conflicting results. By the end of the day, this time around, it really started to separate and maybe the setting would have helped that a little bit further. Maybe prepping more with a moisturizer would have helped, but then maybe it would have creased more. So overall for staying power, I wasn't super impressed. Next up, the Cloven Halo Conceal and Correct. I've had this one for a while. I actually purchased another one because I liked it so much. I have this in shade three. Out of the four I'm talking about today, this is the most affordable at $18. There are 10 shades available. So in terms of formula, it looked fine, but the only problem here is a personal call. What works for me might not work for you, vice versa. There's dimethicone in this formula. I'm not saying it's a villain ingredient at all. This rules out any multitasking. If I use it under the eye, it's okay. If I start using it elsewhere on the face is where I start to see little red bumps or breakouts. The application here, so the formula is very lightweight but also silky. So this isn't that lightweight creamy, this is lightweight kind of glide. Usually when you have some type of ingredient that ends with cone, then you're gonna get that silkier texture. I've, in my experience, I actually really like that because it glides easily across the face. Because a little bit does go a long way here. I used my finger, the brush lifted a little bit too much because it's lightweight and silky. I found it to lift the product off, so I just wanted to kind of press it in with fingers. When I wanted to build it up to try and get to full, it really just didn't build well. It started kind of giving texture, it looked a little funny. Okay. Coverage and finish. This was a little bit on the shinier side for me, so. So I ended up setting it. I would say it gave a good medium coverage here. Maybe not medium to full, but it got to medium. That said, you can't build it like you could in Ilia, which gave stronger coverage, but still, this felt a little bit more lightweight than that, a little bit more natural looking maybe. Still, there was a little bit of shine. I know that's something on people's radar. Okay, so. creasing. There wasn't a lot of creasing here. I didn't see a ton of it. I did see some. There was shine, so I set it, and that prevented some of the creasing earlier in the day. It wasn't one of those heavier formulas that really kind of falls into not only just fine lines, but creepiness. This, I feel like, will be a little bit lighter weight than the Ilia. I feel like those two are kind of on par with one another, and it might be less prone to settling into fine lines because of the weight of the formula. Creasing, not too bad. So then, staying power. This was kind of crazy because I haven't done a full review of this in a while. This did not do very well for staying power, I must say. I was kind of surprised. Saw a lot of feathering by the end of the day. Really wasn't a fan of it. Tried it a couple times and it's just not the one that lasts really strong for me. I think, you know, you can judge it by the end of the day so it doesn't look bad, but I wasn't very impressed by that. And the last concealer that you might want to know about is the Saint On The Go Perfecting Concealer. This is the most expensive of the bunch. Saint really isn't as much of a well-known brand or as popular of a brand as Ilia. Erin's Faces is a smaller business. Love & Hallow, I feel like, has made more of a name for itself, but Saint, I feel like, is kind of there, kind of not there. I know some people know it, some people don't. $32, and it has 12 shades available, so it's tying right now with what Ilia so. has. There's rosemary extract in here, which could be fine for some people, could be irritating to super sensitive skin types. It was at the bottom of the list. Keep that in mind, percentage matters. All right, the application here, another lightweight formula. None of these is really that heavy, dense type of a, of a cream concealer. Very lightweight, very creamy. It was a little more like the Erin's Faces, a little bit, but not as natural. You got a lot more brightening out of this, a surprising amount of brightening actually from the Saint Concealer. It wasn't the straight up evening out, you kind of had to work with it, but I did see some brightening. And the best way to apply for me was just using my fingers. I'd say coverage here is probably light to medium. It was a little bit shiny, so I did need to set it. However, it was really easy to build. It built up like a champ, and it worked really nicely in spot coverage areas on the face. So because it was lightweight and creamy and not kind of on the silkier side, it really did a nice job with those areas that might be a little bit red, might have a little bit of discoloration. Like your skin still looks like skin. I would say it's probably the best of the bunch for multitasking. In terms of creasing, there was more settling into the crepiness. I have a little bit of crepiness under the eye. Didn't see it creasing on the lid or creasing anywhere else. I did see a little bit of initial settling into the lines. Because it was shiny, I also set it with a very light translucent setting powder. That seemed to help. Out of all of them, the least amount of creasing that I saw, and I didn't see a ton, but the least amount that I saw was between this and Erin's faces. Erin's faces, I think, was because 
of the amount that I put on. It wasn't a lot. I think it did a really good job with that. And finally, Staying Power, how did it last throughout the day? It was right behind Ilya. It did fade a little bit more than Ilya because it doesn't have that real evening out property, but the brightening was there. It just kind of faded a little bit more than Ilya. It held up nicely. It looked very smooth. I didn't see gathering and I set it. So that was great. Which are my favorites of the bunch? Which do I think are the best? As I start narrowing down my collection to fewer better, I'm still trying new for you guys to see, but I'm always constantly trying to figure out how I can create a capsule for myself. So really my favorite out of the bunch continues to be Ilya. I love, love, love this concealer. I love the evening out, the coverage. It really does a great job. It is more of a, hi, I'm here, I'm a concealer. On days when I really need a boost, this is what I lean on. Plus I love how easy it is to apply with the brush. So Ilya really wins it out of this group for me. The runner up would be, and I was kind of surprised because I thought it would be Cloven Hallow, but it's actually the Saint because that gives me more of a skin looks like skin look. It's a nice brightener. Yes, it's a bit more expensive. All of these containers are plastic, which I'm trying to avoid. So I'm still gonna be looking for more plastic free, sustainable, eco-friendly options. Keep that in mind. And but that's all I have for today. Have you tried any of these concealers out? If you have, do you have a favorites of the bunch? Do you think one is better than the other? Tell us why and give us the context of what type of skin you have. That always helps in comments. Thank you so much for doing that. I really love hearing from y'all. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you right back here real soon. Until then, bye.